This is a film you should plan to see this weekend. You can check out the channel at just dinesh.locals.com. I'll also be posting links on social media to help you access the film. And you, you have two choices. You can actually purchase the film and just watch it, or you can uh, subscribe to my Locals channel and you'll get the film included. You'll get the film for, for free. Uh, Cyrus, welcome to the podcast. Uh, great to see you. I hope you're doing uh, well. Um, man, this is a film that you made a while ago, The Stoning of Soraya M., and yet it seems timely as ever, ripped from the headlines. Can I start by just asking you to talk about what's happening in Iran now? It's, it seems like there's a new wave of ferment. Uh, yeah. What's causing that and where's it going? Well, first, thanks for having me, uh, and thanks for what you're doing for uh, this film, uh, Soraya, Stoning of Soraya M. Hi to Debbie. Um, you know, it's amazing what's going on in Iran right now because this is the longest sustained and most widespread sort of dissent um, we've seen since the Ayatollahs came into power in 1979. So, you know, um, I'm not obviously there. So I'm not on the ground, but I'm following it as closely as I can. And I do think that the one development that happened only a few days ago that I think is quite significant is when um, they were shutting down the bazaars uh, throughout the country in a kind of uh, a form of a strike. And these, but they're called bazaris. They're basically uh, the mercantile class but they have a huge amount of influence and power in the country. And they were instrumental in the, in, in the days of the Shah. Once, once the Bazaris shut down, I think the Shah knew he was cooked. And now uh, they're doing the same thing to the Ayatollahs and the Islamic Republic. I mean, Cyrus, um that's very interesting because we hear a lot about the women who are protesting the uh, the veil and the uh, hijab and so on. But I think what you're saying is it's a broader based movement than that. It's it also includes the merchant classes, and that's very encouraging to hear. Uh, well, I think the women have influenced them. I think the women it started with them, and now it's had this snowball effect. And you know, to reach this point, I think is quite you know significant, as I said. So, uh, but you're right. This is a women-driven movement. One of the things you did with this film, Soraya M., is that you smuggled it or you figured out a way to get a bunch of DVDs inside of Iran. So this is a film that has not only had an eye-opening impact in America and in the West, but it has actually caused something of a stir inside of Iran because people see it it resonates with them. It's a story about a small town in Iran and the events that happened there. Talk a little bit about the impact of Soraya and this film in Iran. Well, when it opened in 2009, the Iranian government under President Ahmadinejad condemned and banned the film. Uh, they found out about it actually while we were filming uh, in another country in the Middle East. So what happened essentially is we wanted to get it inside of iran this was a mission movie you know like many of the movies that you make so we set that as a goal at the time dvds were prominent so we smuggled uh some uh dvds a few thousand dvds into iran and thousands of copies were made from those and it became kind of an underground hit. It was this bootleg special item that everybody wanted. I've run into Iranians since then and told me, oh, yeah, I saw your film in Iran in a basement with 30 other women. So because it's it, it deals with oppression against women and women treated as third class citizens, women were drawn to it. Now, it became a crime inside of Iran to own a copy of the film. And people have actually gone to prison. One woman who was an activist, they invaded her home and they found that she was writing a short story about someone, uh, you know, dispensing with their Quran after seeing the stoning of Soraya M. She just wrote about it in a story that was only on her laptop. She was arrested. 
So it it became kind of a, I, I don't know, a, I wouldn't call it a, it was a badge of honor to have seen the film and women were especially drawn to it, as were uh, Christians inside of Iran. It's not a Christian movie, as you know. It's about the oppression of women under Islam, but it became a rallying cry for many. I mean, Cyrus, you're, you have Iranian roots. I think when Debbie and I first saw the film, and quite honestly, this was the film that convinced me that you are the perfect guy to direct the Infidel movie, is that you, this is not a film in which you're looking at Iran from the outside. You take us to a small town in Iran. We get to know the mayor, the kind of local chemistry um, of the town, and you describe a kind of scandal that emerges in the town in which a woman is accused of adultery. It's just brilliantly, the story itself is riveting. You find yourself just drawn into that world. Let me ask Thank you this you. question. There might be people who say, and I'm sure there have been some who have, oh, the stoning of Sarayam, I, 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 do, I, do I go and see a movie about someone being stoned? Uh, I want to talk about, have you talk a little bit about the, the ingenious way in which you handle a subject that, in, that necessarily involves brutality, but you did it in a way where Debbie and I looked at each other and we go, that is actually very beautiful, a very odd word to use in connection with a stoning, but it was the way you did it. Well, I think part of it is her, her dignity in the face of this mob. I think people really responded to that. It was an audition actress who came in who plays Soraya and Sharia Ogdashlu, who's Academy Award nominated, Emmy Award winning actress, plays the aunt, who is the only one in the village to defend her. Now, it must be emphasized, and why I think it's important for people to watch, this is a true story. This happened. It's based on the account of the journalist, a French-Iranian journalist in the movie who happens upon this village, portrayed by our friend Jim Caviezel. And Jim came at the last minute, flew all the way over to the Middle East to do that part because he thought it was such an important movie. A previous actor had dropped out for out of fear. So this story, this true story, is about a husband who basically can't afford multiple wives. They live in a poor village. He's interested in somebody else. He wants to get rid of his wife. So he conspires with the local cleric, a mullah, and the mayor of the village and says, I think she's having an affair, knowing full well that if she's found guilty, she will be stoned to death that same day. And I wanted to show the world what a stoning really is. I had seen a movie called Kite Runner where a gal had been hit really in the head with almost a pebble and she keels over. That's not the way it is. It's meant to be torture. It's meant to be brutal. You, you're you not supposed to pick up stones that are too small or too large because you don't, you, you know, you, you, you don't want her to die too quickly. This is and, a heck of a, um, Cyrus, this is a heck of a film and people, um, you got to see that the film this weekend. It's up on my local channel, just dinesh.locals.com. It's the stoning of Sarai M. Cyrus, love to have you back to talk more, but thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for our wonderful time together working on Infidel and what you're doing for stoning of Sarai M. Appreciate it. <laughs>